Now, just in case you're one of those people who don't know how to start conversations or you think you always have these awkward moments in conversations and you hide under the guise of being intro an introvert, well, this conversation is for you. So please stick around. Or if you might not be the person, but you know someone who doesn't quite know what to say, what not to say, how best to say things, then this conversation is definitely for you. Today, we have an etiquette expert. Her name is... Femi Tokwe George, and she's joining us. She's the founder of ProTouch Limited, an etiquette consulting company. She's also a lawyer, and today she's joining us to talk about etiquette of conversations. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Olivia. It's good to have you again. It's nice to be here. I need to sit upright. You don't tell I me know, me. right? I'm literally <laughs> just like, am I, am I very poised now? Well, you're no. ladies already. You're oh, proper thank ladies. Thank you so much. <laughs> I watch you, and I always enjoy your show. Oh, thank you. It's good oh. to have you on the show again. Thank you. Thank you. So I think we should go straight into etiquette of conversations. Let's talk about the do's and the don'ts, you okay. know. We'll talk about that as well as how to start conversations. But I think we should start about, talk about how to start conversations first. Because oftentimes I hear people say, oh, I'm a shy person, I'm an introvert. I hear people oftentimes say, oh, you're so exuberant. You're like the life of the party. And I want to start conversations. I want to make new friends. But I don't know what to start. Or if you're start. Leila, you go around saying you're an extroverted introvert. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I say that as well. Me too. I say that too. So <laughs> how best would you advise someone to start a conversation? Okay, first, let me start by saying conversations are very critical. They're very critical because, so how, how we look, how we act, and what we say is how people judge us a lot of the time. Before we even, people judge us before we open our mouths. But when we open our mouths, I say it's the first opportunity you have to be deliberate about the impression that you make. So I'd say the first thing is say your name. The way you even say your name is important. I am fond of saying, when you meet me, I'll say, hello, my name is Timmy Tokwe George. I would say it in full. And people always say, I like, so that in itself starts off a conversation. I like the way you say your name, but it's very deliberate. And then the next thing you can, you, the important thing is to ask people about themselves. So when you said your name, you, you want to know their name as well, right? And if they have an interesting name, and it could also help you to remember their name. You can say something like, how do you pronounce that? Can you, you know, where, where is that, you know? Am I, did I pronounce it correctly? Because they say typically everybody likes the sound of their own name. So if you remember someone's name, the conversation is already off to a good start. Then you can ask, so say it's at a party. You can say, oh, so um, are you, say it's a couple that invited you. You can say, oh, are you familiar with the, how, so how did you know, you know, the host? How do you know the host? That's a, that's a good way to start that conversation. And then it can go on from there. But you ask them questions. Don't ask personal questions. So in Nigeria, they, for me, I can list so many don'ts. There are more don'ts about conversations than actually <laughs> the do's. Oh, there are lots of things we say that we really shouldn't say. You know, you haven't seen someone, or you see someone, you haven't seen someone in a while, and then you see them, and they, they've put on a little bit of weight, and you say, oh, congratulations, when are you due? <sighs> Honestly. <laughs> I have a friend Honestly, who went on Instagram to rant about this. You must never say And she that. had just gotten married. You Sometimes you don't even never, know if the person is trying to have a baby. You must never, those are some things you mustn't say. Or even if, even someone who is expecting, don't say, oh, you're so huge. Or the, one, uh, one of my pet peeves is, oh, you look so tired. I know, just what suck do you it down. Say, really, what do you say, where do you go from there? So if someone says to you, you look so tired, what do you say? Oh, yes, I am. Or, and you know, sometimes people ask you that question when you're actually upbeat. But you know what that does to that person? It brings down it their brings mood. Them, it brings down their mood. So, you know, we, we have to be a bit, we have to be more considerate about the things we say. You sh even if you think about it, don't say it. Don't okay, say that it. you look so tired one, I am guilty. I think there are even so many times when me and Oliver have been like... Oh. I'm so sorry, I actually look so tired today. Maybe you should rest to each other. Like, mm. But it's so true. We don't even realize how that can actually bring someone's actually... mood from 100 all the way to zero. Absolutely. And it's so easy to overlook and override certain things. Absolutely. One thing that I would say is very common is also around that fat one is when you've actually put on a bit of weight, even sometimes when you've lost, but they'll still go, ah, you're fat too. You become fat, so I like, tell you, okay. you are enjoying. You know, look at you. You know, I didn't go to know the right place. <laughs> but you know what? Even you're so skinny is offensive. Mm -hmm. You're so skinny. Sometimes just saying so, you're so skinny. And the truth is, we all fall into those traps sometimes. Sometimes we're guilty. 
And when you are, when you said something you shouldn't say, and then you realize that the conversation sort of like, you know, goes south, mm. then change the topic. But how do you also know when to end a conversation? Let's take the scenario you gave of being at a party mm -hmm. hosted by couples. You start a conversation with someone. How do you know when to then end it? Body language. Sometimes you can tell, you can, when someone starts looking at their watch, when you're talking to them and someone starts looking at their watch, they really want to move on to the next person or they, you know, they want to stop. Try, not, try to keep it short because at parties, networking events, you really want to walk the room. You want to talk to as many people as possible. And even if you don't, the person you're talking to probably does. So try not to keep the conversation too long. So when you see that, oh, you're really thinking about what next to say, it's a good time to say, you know what, okay, it's really nice meeting you. It's been a pleasure meeting you and say their name. And then you can move on to the next person. This say their name you're saying, it's a very hard thing. It sounds easy. But there are many people who don't find it easy to remember names. Yes. So what tricks and tips would you give for those who need to remember people's names? So, so I started earlier. So if you say, how do you pronounce that? Chances are you would, you know, so is that, or what's the origin of that name? You know, or, or try and associate it with something, you know, like Olive. You know, I, I can't, I, I, I don't know, I just can't forget your name, you know. <laughs> but, you know, I try to, so when, when someone tells me their name, I try to associate it with something or someone else. And when I do, it helps me to remember. Yeah. So try and associate at that time, because you... Everybody loves the sound. Don't you love the sound of your name? Oh, Olive. It's so sweet. Olive. 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 <laughs> Layla. Olive. Layla. It's so Layla. But what if it's the other way around <clears throat> and you can remember names, but you struggle to remember faces? Asking for myself, not going to lie. And this one is in Lagos. A lot of people ah, chairman. Yeah. Chairman, you'll be I looking at the chairman, how far? You'll be looking at the person <laughs> and you'll be like, chairman, oh my goodness, can't like, I can't remember. And because we get to see lots of people at events, people, you know people find it offensive. Yes. So you just hug them. I'm like, oh, good to see you after such a long time. You so you, you can't remember their name, right? Sometimes, yeah, you can remember their name or their face. Or their face. Okay, so you don't, <clears throat> you're like, you know what, I, I know I remember you. Sometimes you, it can be, so it's deliberate. You know, it's, it's sometimes you, you say to the person that, I know, I know you're, I'm good, for me, I'm good with faces. I'm, I've learned to be good with names as well. So I'll say, I'm good with faces, but I can't, right now, I just can't remember your name. And that, the person doesn't find it so offensive. If it's a face, I know I know you. Oh, you can't remember me, right? I'm like, I know I know you, but I can't remember where. And that person will say, oh, this person, then you're like, oh, yes. Sometimes you can't really remember. Well, you find that if you walk away from them, you will remember, but they won't be offended. All right. So now let's talk about the do's and the don'ts of a conversation. Back to conversation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so things, try, try not to say, try, intrusive questions is the first thing, because that's what we do a lot here. Try not to ask people, I'll, I'll give you a scenario. So I went with someone, this was abroad, who went to visit someone, and they had such a lovely garden, you know, and the person next to me, I said, Oh, this is such a lovely house. Did you buy it or are you oh renting? Oh, dear. Did you buy it or are you renting? I've heard people go to people's houses and say, Oh, so how much rent are you paying? What's your service charge? How much is your service charge? Yes, I know that perhaps you want to compare costs and all that, but that's not the way to do it. Just go and do your own research yeah. about the cost of renting in a particular area. It is unacceptable to go to someone's house and ask them whether the house, the host has invited you to their house, it's a beautiful house, and the next thing you ask is whether they're renting it or they bought it. It's an offensive question. It's very offensive. So those are questions you shouldn't ask. Ladies, we do, ladies, a lot of us are guilty because, you know, especially you find extroverts fall into this trap more because we're the ones that say a lot of things, you know. So, oh, lovely hair. I'm How much did you buy it? it? I'm telling you. And, you know, sometimes, and, and, you know, when I get that, I, I just feel, talk, you know, some, so if someone comes to meet me and they establish a rapport, I don't mind. You but know? not the first time we're But it shouldn't be the first time we're meeting. Yeah. Even, so even if it's the first time we're meeting, but you establish a rapport, you know there's some people you meet and you get on with mm -hmm. them. And you say, sometimes you find if you say, I've said so on, oh, lovely hair, I would never ask how much it is. But if someone wants to volunteer that information, that's fine. Well, I'll tell or you the price say, of my hair. Or they, say, <laughs> <laughs> or, they say, or they say to you, you know, I got it from this guy. Do you want his number? I actually said that. I admired someone at a party, a friend, actually, and we're, we're cyclists. And I said to her, I said, you know what, this outfit looks really nice on you. You know what she did? 
She found me on Telegram and she sent me a message of the details. I didn't ask. Aww. So that, that's a pleasant thing. That was very pleasant. That is very pleasant. Very pleasant. What about? Because I didn't ask. Mm. That is actually very, very pleasant. Exactly. What about when you see an acquaintance for the first time in a very long time? Mm. How, do you, how do you kick off that conversation? Sometimes some people may find it a bit awkward. That's true. Well, the first thing, someone you haven't seen in a while, it's so good to see you. Oh, you look... So sometimes the person does look different. Oh, you look different. And then they'll ask Don't you in a good way and in a good, bad way. So you know what, in a good way and a bad way? Oh, most definitely in a good way. You know, you can say to someone that's put on a lot of weight, you can say to them, you're glowing. Oh, you look so, in fact, you look so much better than you did when we were in school. So etiquette involves washing people a lot. You have to be watching people, being considerate. Being considerate, being considerate, being considerate yeah. and, you know, just trying not to put your foot in it. Mm. So when I was in school, when I was in secondary school, when a lot of people see me from secondary school, said, oh my goodness, we never knew you could put on weight. Look at you now. You used to be so skinny. And I just smile and say, well, I have. You know, life happens, I guess. You know, so the thing is, when someone says something, when someone says something that's inappropriate, you don't respond with an equally inappropriate, you know, response. Two wrongs don't make Two a right. Two wrongs don't make a yeah. right. So if someone says something unkind, just smile. If someone says, oh, you look tired, oh, really? Hmm. Okay, now there's so much we need to learn with regards to etiquette. And you have taken it upon yourself to help an etiquette-less group of people <laughs> that we can sometimes be to find our way to establishing perfect conversations yes. and not stepping out of boundaries. And yes. you have a training coming up shortly. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Tell us about it. So I have a training coming up for teens. So we've been running this since 2014. And the feedback we get is amazing. So some of the people that we've actually trained from the first summer camp in 2014, they're now graduates. Um, quite a few are in university abroad. So I got them to send feedback. The first one we had, so a lady wanted to send her daughter. She was going to send her daughter abroad. And she felt, look, I need to send her somewhere, you know, maybe somewhere like a sort of finishing, finishing you know. School, yes. So she sent her to the summer camp. And this, this lady came in timid. You know, she was wondering, how am I going to, how will this girl cope? At the end of the week, when we had a, an award ceremony, a dinner and award ceremony, where we invited parents as well, this, the, the, her mother said, look, I need to say something. Like, you're taking testimonials from the children. Can I say something as well? She said, you know what, my daughter, I, my daughter came in here shy, timid, but now, you know, in a few days, I've actually seen her evolve into a lady. I feel Aww. comfortable and confident to send her abroad. And you know, she said, she gave me a charge that day and she said, you know what, you mustn't stop. You must keep doing this. No matter how hard it is, you must keep doing it. So year in, year out, summer, July, August. So this one is coming up on, on Saturday, 4th of August. And um, what, what, do we, what do we offer? What do we train? We train them on self-awareness, life skills, self-awareness, social awareness. So even things like arts of conversation, because conversation is an art, we tell them the kind of things you shouldn't say to your friends. Oh, your surname is different from your brother's. So does that, are your parents divorced? Oh, wow. Do they have, these are questions adults ask. And we don't even think about we don't how think about they it. sound. Yes. We don't think about it, but they're Absolutely. very offensive. So that's coming up on the 4th of August. And it also helps them with confidence building. We teach them on effective communication and dining etiquette. Dining etiquette is very important. We're talking, My mother's we're talking favorite about thing that. when I was growing we're talking up. About that. <laughs> it's amazing how people actually miss opportunities mm. because they're invited for... Nowadays, companies invite people for interviews over dinner and they miss opportunities because they just don't know the art of yeah. dining. So it's a whole day of training it's a whole day, teenagers. A whole day of training teenagers. And we take preteens as well. So it's from 10 to 16. And it starts at 10 to 4. It's holding in Lecky. But they can get more information. People can get more information on our page, which is at ProTouch LTD. And so they can... So at ProTouch LTD on Instagram. At ProTouch LTD on Instagram. Um, at ProTouch LTD on Twitter. Or my personal handle, the Timmy Top by George. All right. Brilliant. Thank you so, Thank you so, so much. much. Yeah. You. I feel like I have a lot to think about now. My next conversation, I'm going to make sure that it's etiquette on a different, different scale. And people <laughs> ask people how much they earn. Oh, oh yes. gosh. Very important question. Or even asking, is asking people how old they are, is it, is it rude? It's impolite. What do you need that for? What, why, why do we really need how that information? How old are you now? You know? How old the are you now? now? Yeah. How yeah. old are you <laughs> now? <laughs> how old are you now? You know, we do that for children.
children. We but not, wish you. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> I'm, you know what we always say? I'm a year older. Yeah. I'm a year older. Yeah. I'm going on 16. I'm a year older. In fact, I just turned 15 yes. last week. I mean, I turned 10. <laughs> I'm a year Thank older. Thank you so much for joining Thanks. us. Well, to enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.